Welcome along to Lauren the Porky here on WLR. It's Thomas McCarthy here till 7 o'clock. Well, the Hurling Championship is starting to hot up this weekend. 4,400 will be in Turles for Saturday's All-Ireland Hurling Qualifier between Waterford and Galway. Plenty of big match build-up to come in the company of former Dacia defender Brian Flannery and All-Ireland winning manager with Galway, Cyril Farrell. Later in the hour, we'll hear from Waterford ladies attacker Roisin Tobin and Dacia Kamogi captain Niamh Rocket, ahead of two must-win games this weekend. Play resumed, all OK, end of roll and takes it, drops, drives it to length and all in park, ball drops down, it's against the who's first to react good chance for goal for Clare, back in the left, James Keyes puts it in the back of the net, the long ball from Roland, and would you believe, ends up in the back of the net, Sickner for Waterford, 55 minutes gone, and the super sub gets it, it's a water break, we said we needed one, we've got one, but now we've a game in our hand, 2.17, that's... 23 points, 119 is 22. Leash go in front for the first time. Yeah, Leash the first time in front. And uh, if ever a team needed a water break, it's Waterford. And this is a big test for Liam Kyle and the Waterford players. And as I mentioned, we need leadership on this pitch now is needed all over the place. White and blue, of course, blue and white and white and blue. And can the white and blue of Waterford get the important score from the puck out? As he wins, ball gone aside, chance of a score. Brilliant goal by Patrick Hearn. Brilliantly cut by Ozzy and the Dungarvan men give Roland no chance. They did it as minor as under 20. They've done it on the big stage now with the senior. Ozzy collects the high ball, gives it to Corn, and the Dungarvan man delivers in spades. Ozzie's what a technique goal! technique was fantastic there. If you could slow that down and show kids how to catch a high ball, it was fantastic technique. Great pass on to Patrick. Do or die. It's life or death, or is that too much of a call to make? There's more important things we know, but for the hurlers of Waterford and Leash, there's nothing more important than the victory here. Michael Kelly wins it. Good play by the Abbey Sideman. Off his shoulder is Bennett. Kylie gives it to Bennett. Bennett in space takes a shot. Back at the net. What a goal for Waterford. The young Abbey Sideman showed great composure. Held on to the ball. Gave it to the Bennett. And when Bennett's in that position, he doesn't miss. Back at the net for the Bally Saggardays. Yes, it's another weekend of knockout hurling in store. As you just heard, the Waterford hurlers survived a scare from Leash last time out to set up a round two clash with Galway in Simple Stadium Saturday at two o'clock. We will have every puck of the ball here on WLR. It will be our George Corbett squad a big match with Kieran O'Connor and Dan Shanahan calling the action from 145. Well, one man who has followed Waterford's fortunes all season is former Dacia defender and Munster Express writer Brian Flannery who joins me on the line now. And Brian, you were in Nolan Park last Saturday. How close did Waterford come to crashing out of the championship? Yeah, look, I think uh, um, Kieran O'Connor and, and Shiner there got the call very much right. Uh, that water break was was never needed more, and it wasn't just the the twenty eight degree heat they were talking about. Um, yeah, it was a real scare. Um, look at at half time, you know, Waterford were eight points up in a great position. You just felt if they got a couple of early scores straight after half time that did you know that did put the game to bed and could run out you know comfortable winners you know and you have to remember suppose this leash team had lost to Wexford by 20 points conceded 531 in Nolan Park only a few weeks previously so it was reasonable to expect that that Waterford would you know would have that that type of dominance um but you know when those goals went in and Waterford in that third quarter were I think they were outscored something like two four to three points or that it was a it was a big turnaround and you know particularly that last goal a hail mary of a free from endo roland and it ends up in the back of the net uh and you hear the the, the roar the leash crowd it was like they had ten thousand supporters at it um so you know it was waterford were in jeopardy you know the the season and the championship was on the line and in fairness they they responded um none more so and again the, the commentary there austin Gleason. and uh, made a couple of big plays o- over those closing minutes, setting up Patrick Horn for the goal. Um, and then you had Michael Kiley uh, setting up Stephen Bennett for the, the goal in, in in effect nearly the last puck of the game. But it was certainly close, too close for comfort. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, Liam Cahill spoke well after he he was, I suppose, thankful that Waterford were still in the championship. And that, that's the main thing, you know, that, that Waterford are still in the championship. Um, and one good win gets you, I suppose, back on back on track. Like after leading by eight points at half time, Brian won sixteen to eleven. How did Waterford make such heavy weather of closing out the game? 
Yeah, look, I suppose there's a couple of things. I mean, even in that first half, uh, you know, I think they hit eight or nine wides in the first half, 19 wides in total. Again, that's too high. Um, the other thing, I suppose, is shot selection, decision-making, uh, particularly in the first half. We seem to be going f- scores from from long distance. Uh, you know, when, when you had Desi Hutchinson, you had Stephen Bennett inside, I would certainly would have been saying, God, you know, feed the ball into them. Um, you know, so there was definitely you know, mistakes were made. Uh, and to be honest with you, you'd have to say in that third quarter, the defence looked vulnerable. You know, you had a, a couple of high balls, a breaking ball that the, the first goal came off of with Paddy Purcell, who had a, had a great game. And then, as I said, it was literally just a Hail Mary of a free from the goalkeeper and it's up in the back of your, your net. That shouldn't happen, you know, so that's that's poor defending. Um, so, you know, there was definitely... Uh, errors in, in 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 certainly in in, in that stage, um, and then it was just a case of trying to circle the wagons and and just fall over the line. There was lots of changes in personnel, uh, Brian. Also changes uh, positionally on on the Waterford team. It's Sean O'Brien coming into goal. You had uh, Shane Bennett at wing back, Patrick Corn midfield, Kevin Moore in wing forward, Austin Gleeson at full forward, just to name a few. Which of those mm. moves do you think that Liam Cahill will stick with now for Saturday afternoon? <laughs> not sure who they stick with. I don't know. Look, I, I mean, I was certainly surprised. Um, you know, the goalkeeping situation is is interesting. In fairness, Sean O'Brien, you know, played well uh, and did well. But again, I, I couldn't see why Billy Nolan wouldn't have been starting the game. Um, you know, and if if I was sitting around tonight, I know the team will be announced later tonight around the table with the Waterford selectors. I'd need a lot of convincing as to why Billy Nolan isn't, you know, Watford's number one, uh, you know, so you're, you're even at that alone is, is, is unusual to flip flop between goalkeepers mid championship. That is unusual. Um, yeah. I think uh, Shane Bennett, when he came back first on the panel, if you remember his first league game, he was actually named wing back, but played corner forward. Uh, so look, he's not on, on, on used to playing half back. Um, I think he just he just didn't play well on the day, um, as opposed to not being capable of playing wing back. Uh, you know, Callum Lyons in the other wing was under pressure as well. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, for 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 tomorrow and for the championship, you know, Liam Cahill and his selectors, they may revert to what their best team was last year because I'm not sure any of these switches work particularly well. Patrick Horn got two good points early on in the first couple of minutes. Um, really didn't feature much at centre field and, you know, ended up in the forward line and scored that crucial goal. You know, again, Patrick Curran, to me, is a finisher. He's a, you know, he's a good inside forward and probably plays best in an inside forward line with, with players around him. Um, so, you know, will he start? Probably, but at centre field, I, 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 I wouldn't think so. Austin, I suppose, look, that debate goes on all the time. Um, you can, you know, he had a, I suppose, more than any Waterford player, he done more to to keep the ship afloat, and as I said, a couple of big interventions down that closing stretch to help get Waterford over the line. Uh, and I suspect he'll probably you know probably play in the forward line uh, tomorrow against Galway. Um, that's one change that that'll probably uh, that'll probably stick. But you know it, it's it's hard to know. There's rarely going into a, a knockout championship game. Would there be such uncertainty as to you know what the Waterford lineup will be, both personnel, but also positionally? Um, you know, I I think there's a lot of players, uh, you know, I suppose in the mix for a starting uh, position, um, which is unusual. You know, usually at, at this stage of the championship, having played a couple of games, you'd you'd be fairly fixed on on maybe thirteen of your lineup. Um, not the case, and that's not usually a good thing. Yeah, there is a little bit of an unsettled look to, to the Waterford team at the moment, Brian, and that's not helped by the injury troubles that they've had. Conor Prunty came back the last day from a quad injury. Jimmy Barron came off the bench. Uh, Kieran Bennett is a, is in a race to be fit uh, with a tendon injury, missed that leash game. And it's also emerged that Irla Daly is now a doubt uh, for the Galway game on Saturday. It's understood that he got a quad injury in training on Tuesday night. How much of a loss would he be at centre-back? Oh, that would be a big blow because in fairness, you know, we're talking about positions and, you know, he's kind of nailed down that centre-back position and has been very good for Waterford. He has, you know, he's a great temperament, obviously, but I mean, he he has all the attributes to play centre-back and that would be a big loss. You know, there's no doubt about that. Um, You know, I suppose, look, 
ground is very hard. You know, there is a lot of soft tissue injuries. A lot of the d- different counties have, you know, are, are picking up injuries. But I think coming on the back of, you know, doubts about Kieran Bennett, Jamie Barron, you know, the loss of your centre back would be a huge blow. Um, and again, it would it would cause another restructure which you really don't want to be restructuring the spine of your team. You know, that's if you were looking for one constant and that's why, you know, even the goalkeeping position, you you want a, a strong spine, goalkeeper, fullback, centre-back, midfield, centre-forward, full-forward. You, you really want a strong spine to lose. You know, look, remember we've already lost Ty De Burka from a, that pivotal position, but to uh, Irla Daly, who's done so well, you know, that would be a big blow. Last month, Brian Waterford lost to Galway in Salt Hill in the league and sort of summer-like conditions that we've experienced over the past week. The likes of, you know, Brian Concan and Connor Wheel and Joe Canning did a lot of damage that day. What will Liam Cattle and his management team have learned from that game, do you think? Well, I think you, you look at the positive, first of all. I think there was a, about 20 or 30 minute period in the first half where Waterford were, were extremely good, um, where... You know, they mixed up, I suppose, the, the play between going long and playing through the lines. If you remember, I think early on was a chain, Ben, it caught a great ball and you had Jack Prendergast running off his shoulder and stuck a great goal. Desi Hutchinson was electric in the game. You know, Waterford brought real energy um, to large parts of that game and looked very good for periods. Obviously, they got, I suppose, the second half was a bit of a turnaround and, and Galway got a bit of run on Waterford and... Um, you know, I suppose there would have been leaked uh, scores and goals as well. So while it was a very high scoring game, there were certainly positives to be taken from that as well. And I think if Waterford can get that energy back into the team, obviously Jamie Barron, if he returns, would be a huge boost. Um, you know, Daryl Lyons played well off the bench the last day as well. And, you know, really run at that that Galway back line. You know, they're, they're strong, they're physically big, but they did look vulnerable and every team looks vulnerable if you if you can win possession and take them on and run at them and create that that overlap. Uh, you know, that's perhaps uh, Waterford's best opportunity to win tomorrow. Time to put your head in the block, Brian. Who will make it through to the all Ireland quarterfinals come Saturday evening? Yeah, look, uh, you know, normally you'd, you'd, you'd be more confident in, in predictions and that, Tomas, to be honest with you. But... There's just so much un- uncertainty. I- I'll certainly be waiting to see the the lineup tonight. And again, you might have to wait until the throw in tomorrow to to see exactly where where guys are lining out. Um, I think it's a big ask for Waterford. Uh, you know, given the uncertainty in in relation to team lineup, in relation to the injuries that seem to be that injury list is growing longer. Um, having said that, the the positive is you know. Apart from the 2017 All-Ireland, you know, Waterford have a great record against Galway. The game is on in Simple Stadium. That will certainly suit Waterford players. Um, you know, it'll be a big ask. It'll need big games. You know, I think it'll be a rallying call to the team to, to back to the form that beat Kikini and Leicester's All-Ireland semi-final. It'll take that type of performance if Waterford are to win. Are they capable of it? Absolutely. But, you know, you'd certainly be concerned with the level of injuries and, you know, confidence after the performance the last day may well be an issue as well. So it's a tough task for Waterford tomorrow. It certainly is, Ryan. But you, you touched on the great record that Waterford have had against Galway in Championship Hurling. Indeed, they were unbeaten up until the 2017 All-Ireland Final. And a lot of our listeners will remember a game you were involved with back in 1998 in Crow Park when you beat Galway by 10 points in an All-Ireland quarter final. Um, what do you recall about that, that occasion yourself? Yeah, look, at it. it was quite unique, to be honest with you. Back in 98, um, we were playing, it was actually our third weekend in a row playing. We had we had drew with Clare in the Monster Final, lost the replay, I think by about 12 points. So we were out again three weeks in a row. The perception was that, that you know, three weeks in a row was, was going to be too much for us. Um, but it was it was quite a unique occasion. It was the first time Waterford senior hurlers were playing was playing championship in Crow Park since I think 1963 was the last time before that. So we actually went up the night before, and uh, Gerald McCarthy knew someone in Crow Park, so he he got the got the groundsman to open up the Crow Park for us the, the Saturday night before the game. So we walked the pitch um, in and a, in and around Crow Park. So it was. You know, at the time, there would have been very few Waterford players who would have played in Crow Park. A couple of the lads was on the, the 92 minor team. But other than that, most of the panel had never been 
on the, the grass in Crow Park. So again, good management by Gerald McCarthy and kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you, you know the, the film Hoosiers, I think it was released as best shot over here in, in Ireland. It's a basketball film starring Gene Hackman where again, he, he took a, a, a local town team to a, a state final and they were playing in the big stadium Dallas Maverick Stadium or whatever in, in the final and the night before the game again he, he took them around the, the the arena and got a measuring tape out and measured the, the the distance from the ground to the basketball hoop and the the distance to the free throw line and he would just made the point look that's the exact same uh, measurements as in your your local gym at home and it was a bit like that with us and Gerald McCarthy you know he's saying look it's just another pitch guys um, and it was probably one of our best performances we, we 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 won comfortably and if memory serves me right I think Sean Daly Liz Moore um who had come into the team uh late that summer had a, had a big game and a big influence on it we we saved the pe- penalty early in the game and we kind of you know it was kind of certainly in the full back line myself Tom Feeney Sean Colnan it was one of our most comfortable games we, we ever played such was the dominance out the field of Waterford that day so if we can get a repeat performance of that, uh, I think we'll all be happy uh, in, in Turles tomorrow. Absolutely, Brian. I think that that film is maybe a little bit b- before my time, but I might check it out maybe on, on Netflix <laughs> look, look at some up. stage. It's probably on YouTube. Probably on YouTube. <laughs> and speaking of, of YouTube, Brian, you mentioned the penalty yeah, save I... as well. And I just want to play a little bit of a, a clip that I've dug out here from the, the RT archives. As Cohen hits this high, but to the left... It's been Waterford's first half. It's been great disappointment on the part of Galway. The selectors now really will have a very hard think, I'm sure, for the next few minutes of the halftime break coming up very shortly. This is the penalty, and that the save on the line. It comes back to Brian Flannery and out. So, Brian, you played a bit of a staring role there yourself, saving that penalty from, from Derek Cohen in the first half. Yeah, I, I remember it well because uh, it, it was the worst hit penalty I'd say ever in Crow Park okay. and I knocked it out for a, a, a 65 and I remember sort of, as you would, kind of jumping around a bit and uh, Dickie Murphy from Wexford was referee and he came in and he started laughing at me he said, he said, will you go air out? He said, my granny would have stopped that. No need to be jumped around. So um, I, I'd certainly take credit that there's a, there's a beautiful picture in, in my mother's uh, kitchen of the save, it, it looks well in the photograph, you know, diving uh, on, on my knees to save it. But was, as I said, it, it was a, a poorly hit uh, penalty. But we'll, we'll, we'll take that one anyway, uh, Tomás. Lovely memories, lovely memories, Brian. Former Waterford defender and Munster Express writer, Brian Fenry. Thanks so much for your time today and enjoy the game on Saturday. Cheers, Tomás. Now you're hurling. Lorna Porca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR.